I'm really excited to be here. Um, like Benny said, I, uh, I started a company about three years ago. It's a commercial electric company, which I know sounds lame, but in just three short years with no college education or anything like that, um, I've started a business that, em that currently employs about 25 people. Um, last year in, in business, we did almost $4 million. Um, we, we did six of the top 10 restaurants in Kansas City. We're doing all like the roastery coffee shops. I mean, it's just, it's exploding and our retention rate is amazing because people love to come work here um, and learn the electrical trade with people that honestly, no offense, but our number one policy is don't be a dick, right? Because you've all probably seen those construction workers that are like gnarly and bitter and sour and like, Old isn't a problem, but the bitter and sour uh, definitely is. We really enjoy what we do. Um, and so I know that kind of comes off cocky, like kind of brash, like, man, dude, I started this thing. I have the, the, the house of my dreams. I married the woman of my dreams. Um, I have three stunningly handsome little boys, um, nine, seven, and five. And then on finally on try number four, we got a little baby girl. Like... It's amazing. I have a plethora of friends um, from all walks of life. I just, I'm, I'm trying to heap on this brag. Um, I'm not trying to be humble at all and say, my life's really, really good. It's awesome. Um, and the reason I share that is because if you knew how my life started, it's the complete opposite of success. I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth, which I honestly, I have no idea what that even means. I mean, all spoons kind of look silver, I guess, unless plastic. Um, I didn't grow up uh, an instant success. I grew up a statistic, um, right? My, uh, my mom at 15 years old, um, which I don't know the age gamut, freshman to seniors in here, but my mom at 15 years old, of course, was in a relationship with a guy that she thought was the love of her life. And when he decided that he wanted to date someone else and broke up with her, it broke her heart. It broke her heart so bad that she decided to call it quits. And she basically took everything that she possibly could pill-wise out of the medicine cabinet, slammed them all, and luckily, um, some friends caught her and rushed her to the emergency room. They pumped her stomach with charcoal. I don't know the exact story of what they did there, but they did take a blood sample and a urine sample. And when she came to, probably embarrassed that she tried to kill herself, maybe a little frustrated that it didn't work, she was informed that she was pregnant at 15 years old with a... Uh, a little baby boy that because, uh, well, I don't think they knew it was a baby boy, but because of the massive overdose, the doctor suggested aborting the fetus because of age and complications probably due to the drug overdose. Um, shocker, it's me. So, I, I mean, I, <laughs> I, uh, some people would probably argue that I'm, I'm very handicapped in some regards <laughs> and dealing with uh, the repercussions of that. Honestly, spelling, so literally out there, I'm trying to do an Instagram post. Um, and I'm like, Brett, how do you spell success? Like, can't spell success, man. I'm so, I'm, I'm terrible at it. I, I just, I'm, I'm a bad speller. I can't spell electrician. And I own an electric company. Like, I, I just struggle at it. Um, but anyway, so I wish I could say that, like, that was the worst decision my mom ever made and everything got great after that, but it didn't. Right? To deal, um, for her, her choice to deal with the embarrassment of a failed suicide the embarrassment of being a 15-year-old, uh, you know, unwed, pregnant mother, she dropped out of high school. And there started the decisions that were always not made on advancement or success, but desperation and survival. Um, that's a terrible place to be. So I want to, I, I love that the, the uh, sorry, Army and National Guard, um, the bad dudes that could beat us all up, uh, <laughs> they said that college isn't for everyone, I, I'm going to venture to say graduating high school is for every freaking one of you. Do not drop out. You don't necessarily have to go to the military. You don't have to go to college. You don't have to join the trades. Like, you can do a lot of things, okay? You have to graduate high school. I'm in the construction field. I deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. I promise you the door to success is, like, have reliable transportation, <laughs> Graduate high school. You are 75% of the way there, guys, okay? But so my mom didn't graduate high school, and it started, you know, um, she just started survival mode, okay? Which meant a lot of minimum wage jobs, and it also meant hooking up with a lot of dirtbag guys, okay? So that drove her into the arms of a guy named, well, I won't say his name, but my stepdad. That was my stepdad for the majority of 
of my life, which is shocking that I call him my stepdad, right? Because he wasn't the kind of man that actually loved my mom and married her. Um, I, I never really saw affection from them. What I saw was the cop showing up because he beat the crap out of her again in front of me and my three little sisters, or he beat me again, or he beat my sisters again. This wasn't the kind of man that was loving and compassionate. He also wasn't the kind of man that showed me what a man was supposed to be, that worked hard and provided for people. Instead, he constantly was getting fired because he was showing up late, hung over. He was blowing his entire paycheck at bars on Friday nights, and he was asking me if any of my friends knew where he could get good weed. Um, he was like showing me pornography at a very young age. Um, he was beating the crap out of me because I was listening to, I'm sorry, but black music, um, which the worst butt kicking I ever got was when I was listening to Kid Rock. Um, I had the audacity to tell him, hey, Kid Rock's white, and he just beat me ever more. <laughs> this is, yeah, I don't, whoa, whoa, buddy, sorry. You know what you're talking about. This is the kind of environment that I grew up with in home. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, like, um, make this stuff up. Like, I hope you realize the, the, the devil's in the details, right? Like, this was the, the childhood that I grew up in. And maybe for some of you, maybe not as extreme or maybe worse, that's the kind of household you live in. What sucked is that even on the outside, I was getting it too, right? Because we were so poor, we were getting evicted all the time. I went to five schools in two years. Um, we tallied up like 22 by high school. Um, high school is when I went, met Benny and I actually got to stay in Kearney the majority of my, my years. But in fourth grade, I got pulled into a special class and I doubt that teachers would do this again. It was so, it was so startling to me, but they pulled me in and they said, hey, you're the, the child of a teenage pregnancy. You're you know, more than likely going to be a teenage father. So here's you know, some curriculum in fourth grade. Um, in fifth grade, I got pulled into a science class and it wasn't just me, there was a handful of us. But it was, what was funny is it was the same kids in the pregnancy class as in, as in the addiction class, right? Like, your parents are alcoholics. It's in your DNA to be an alcoholic. I remember feeling, like, really hopeless. Like, my choices didn't matter, right? Like, the past that I didn't choose was going to dictate my future. I remember in ninth grade, um, whenever I got brought home, unfortunately, by a teammate. Um, Benny knows him. Not a very nice dude. But uh, for some reason, it was, it was actually wrestling. Me and Benny wrestled together also. Um, it was super cold out, and my parents didn't you know, come to any of these events. So kudos to all you parents that are here. Um, my, my parents never came to anything. So you, you're doing a great job just showing up. I mean, right, that's a lot of parenthood is just, I mean, at least that's what I tell myself with my four kids. They're nonsense. Um, that's actually why I'm here. I don't want to help with bedtime. So wife's at home doing bedtime. I'm here hanging out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he brought me home to a very low income street with a lot of Section 8 housing. You know, it was a duplex. It was known for drugs. And he said the words that I remember, even though I had never heard audibly, I felt my entire life. He said, oh, I should have known you were one of those kinds of people. That's the environment I grew up in. And, and, and you're going to say like, okay, well, so the question is, right, like, how did you break the cycle, right? How did you overcome genetics of alcoholism and the, what you saw and believed to be what a man was, drug addict, beating your mom, all that kind of stuff. How did you break through it? So much of it was sports. I know this isn't like a Jesus juke, like Benny said, like, hey, come talk about sports because I want to keep these kids. That's not the case, right? Because I grew up with an extremely racist, racist stepdad, okay? And uh, my sixth grade coach was Kevin Crow. Sixth grade, I got to play football. Dude, has anybody ever rode their bike in all their pads to practice? Anybody? Because I've done, I did that, all right? Well, I guess I'm poorer than all of you. Uh, <laughs> but like, I'd ride my bike, you know, helmet on, freaking all sport, which was pop energy drink. It's not a good mix. Like, that's your one hydrate. Like, she's like, that will not hydrate you. My pee was dark yellow uh, after practice. <laughs> But he did something that I really remember noticing in sixth grade, right? Like, I grew up with a racist stepdad that would say very, very mean, hateful things about African Americans. But when I would go over to Coach Crow's house, because his son, Corey, was a good friend of mine, he would have all the black kids, all the white kids, all the Hispanic kids, all at his house, swimming in the pool together, barbecuing, having a great time. Race meant nothing to this guy. It mattered, were you going to show up? Were you going to treat him with respect? Um, I remember... Another thing that really stood out to me about him is his son, Cordy, really wanted to play quarterback. Always talked about playing quarterback. Guess who didn't play quarterback? Corey, because he couldn't throw the freaking ball. He sucked. He was terrible. And, Ke and Coach Crow was like, no, you're not going to play. Just because you're my kid 
doesn't mean I'm going to give you a pass. Every position has to be earned. In sixth grade, that's what that coach taught me. In seventh grade, I had an awesome defensive coach, Coach John Wygant. I ate more home-cooked family meals at his house than I ever did at my own. And I would go over there, and I remember he would make, like, uh, enchiladas and crack eggs on them and do all this stuff. And he was, he was such a dork. I mean, he was like the dad that, like, took joy in embarrassing his wife and embarrassing his kids. But once again, I always, I always saw a man loving and providing and, though awkwardly, being affectionate towards his family. And I knew that's what I wanted. My, my freshman year, um, so Benny was one year younger than me, but my freshman year, we were one and nine in high school football, and a uh, new coach came into town, Coach Mark Thomas. I would argue is the greatest coach of all time. Um, because my freshman year, he pulled in the freshman and he said, hey, I know this is going to sound crazy, but if you do what I say, I promise you, your senior year, you'll, you'll win state. It sounded crazy, right? We're one and nine. We suck. We're terrible. He said, do what I say. Do what I say. I promise you'll win state. Our senior year, we won state. Um, a lot on the shoulders of Benny. Uh, Benny, Benny won it again the next year uh, with like an average sped of like 63 to 3. It was just, it was just ridiculous. I mean, he, they, they, they tore it up. But it also communicated to me, like, believe in the system. Like, work your butt off. Effort and attitude. Show up and work hard. And your past does not have to be your future, right? So, like, I'm not making all this stuff up. I mean, this is all stuff. Sorry, I have notes because, like, I'm not a public speaker. Um, but uh, where am I? I don't know your story, right? It could be way better than mine. It could be way worse than mine. What I would say is don't make football all about stats. Don't make it about getting the letterman jacket and getting recognized by, by your peers. Don't make high school about popularity and, you know, whatever. Don't, high school is not the pinnacle of your life. Or if it is, you kind of failed. Because um, I'm living my best life now. Um, I mean, I, I'm sorry. High school is awesome. It, it will be awesome. I'm not saying don't go to dances and do push-ups all day. Like, I'm not saying that. <laughs> you know, like... Gosh, you'd be huge. You'd be on that back table. That's what they do. Up, downs, right now. <laughs> but anyways, um, so <laughs> I've seen that a lot of life, and especially the construction industry, like when you think of construction, you think of those dudes eating hot dogs at Quick Trip at 5 in the morning. You're like, what the heck, dude? Like with a big gulp soda, you know, it's breakfast. Um, it's, it's weird. Like it doesn't have to be that way. Um, you could join the Army. You could join. I would... I don't want to be brash, but I would say don't go to vocational school. It's better to find a company like, like ours. So the name of my company is Empowered Electric. You could look, at, look us up on Instagram or Facebook, at Empowered KC. Um, we really take pride in storytelling and, and providing a great opportunity for our people. And there are good companies out there. The reason I say don't go to vac vocational school is we hire people and then pay for their school. Like something like Vaterot or DeVry can cost you $16,000, $18,000 a year. Um, which I, I will gladly pay for through a program while teaching you and paying you to learn a trade, whether it's electrical, um, you know, HVAC, anything like that. Construction can be an awesome opportunity. Um, and once again, it's not about race. It's not about education. It's not about your past. It's not about anything like that. It is about attitude and effort. I don't know your story. You know it better than mine, but I promise you, I share mine just to say, you can be better. You can overcome. And you'll learn that. I mean, that's what he's going to be screaming at you when you're doing uh, suicides. Faster, faster. You're like, dude, I just puked. Leave me alone. See, I was a linebacker, which means I was fast enough to get teamed up with the freaking cornerbacks and running backs and stuff, but slow. <laughs> like, I wasn't fast enough. So it's like always faster, Josh, faster. And it sucked. But I knew, like Coach Thomas said, do what I say, in your senior year, you will win state. So, like, I don't know if Benny's made that program, but, guys, I, I'm super excited about your potential, um, regardless of knowing you. You have a great coach, a great – well, you have a great person. Maybe he's a good coach. I don't know that. He was a great player. <laughs> no, thanks a ton for having me. Um, I wish you guys the best. Oh, Sorry. about growing up and the, you know, the, the men that were in your life. What a, 
What did the man that you met when you got in high school, mm. what did that do to you? Yeah, it was huge. So I didn't tell one story because you might – not like it, right? But I want to be I want to be honest with you. And I mean, I'm not going to tell you his name, but I had a coach. He was a great coach, an amazing coach, a great person, a great friend now. And I remember um, things like this. So when, when you grow up in an abusive home, um, what's funny is things get skewed, right? So I was a terrible student, partially because like when you're hungry and thinking, are you going to get evicted? It's hard to study, <laughs> right? Like when the electricity's turned off and you're like running to the neighbor's house to fill up water jugs on their outdoor spigot. It's hard to like study your spelling words, you know? Um, so I, I struggled in school uh, pretty heavily, but what things I should have got disciplined for, failing grades, I didn't. But then like moving the TV to my bedroom when I had friends spend the night, like I would get punched in the face. So like proper discipline was really, really weird to me. Um, I think in high school, those men brought that like standard, like, hey, you show up late to practice, you're doing up downs. You drop my freaking football, up downs. Like, you go and, and, and I find out that you went to a party where there was alcohol, up downs. Like, there was this ro- proper sense of, hey, man, if you really want to succeed, you have to, you have to align yourself with the appropriate crowd making the right decisions. Once again, I'm not telling you how to live your life or anything like that. I'm, I'm telling you that if you want if, if you want to succeed, your actions have to back up what you say. And so I had a coach, my, my – uh, junior year that I remember I started to get a little popular I started to get cool you know whatever it's relative um and I remember in class I kind of belittled a nerdy kid right I said something smart Alec and made fun of him and uh the coach was like hey you know can can you come come out to the uh, hallway with me and I walked out there and he literally when I turned he shoved me into the locker and he said don't you ever use popularity or power to belittle other people do you understand and like, I, I, okay, I understand, like, maybe not the best thing to do. But it really drove home that, like, that's inappropriate. Like, I know that's a small, trivial thing for you, but that's not right. That's not okay to belittle other people, to be mean. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, so I would say, like, the high school coaches, man, really taught me what it was like to be a man. I mean, I had, I had one high school coach that would pick me up every morning to, to whenever we had early morning practices because we didn't have a car. He would take me home every night. You know, I mean, it really showed me, like, manliness could also be compassion um, and caring and listening and things like that. I mean, it was, it was, really, it was really cool. And I remember one more thing about Coach Thomas. Um, I, I got in the gym. I was, I was a, a dorky kid, but I was all like, hey, if, you know, if I – if I stay in the weight room, I don't have to go home to the abusive home. So I got, I got really big. We had this thing called the total package, which was like you could bench press um, 175% of your body weight. You could squat 200%. You could hang clean 175% of your body weight. Well, when I started out freshman year, dude, I couldn't do anything. Like I could bench press the bar. I was a scrawny little nothing. And then my senior year, I was five pounds away from being the strongest kid in our entire school. And I remember I would always kind of brag about myself because, like, I, you know, I was strong and stuff. And I remember I said, Coach Thomas, why don't you ever brag about me? And he said, because you're too busy talking about yourself. And uh, he said, I brag about you all the time behind your back, but in, when I'm around you, all you do is talk about yourself. And it was like those little teaching moments that, like, you know, of course I was like, meh, you know, whatever, you know. But, like, it, it, it really showed. And, you know, I remember the next week he actually worked out with me. And, dude, he crushed me. He was so strong. Like, I know most of you think you could outdo Benny. Probably can't. Like, it's, it's ridiculous, like, how strong football coaches are. And, you know, like, come on, man. Um, but anyways, that's, that, you know, I think I learned a lot about being a man um, from high school teachers and, and coaches. So, yeah. Anyways, yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.